The state of Massachusetts just kicked open a very ugly door, and that opening will lead to the destruction of a nation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into this one. I have to say this one is terribly tragic. It is more tragic on so many levels. It's hard to explain how destructive this actual story is and how heartbreaking it is because what it actually is doing. Now, I want to explain this very basically or at its most basic level before we get into the story. When a group of people in a society or when a nation or when a government group or anybody who stands in authority chooses to open up the door to attacking the most vulnerable of its society, what it does is it in essence ignites the very beginning of the end. When you choose to exploit children, when you choose to redefine terms like parenting, or when you choose to mess with the basic and most holy of institutions that God has put into play, you almost always Put yourself down a road of complete and total annihilation, and that is exactly where we're going in this current moment. I am looking at an article that is so unbelievably tragic. The title of the article says, Massachusetts bill would allow mothers to sell their own newborns to the highest bidder. Yes, folks, sell their own newborns to the highest bidder. Let's look at the article. The article says on June 12th, the Massachusetts House unanimously voted to pass a bill that would allow mothers to sell their newborns and base parenthood solely on intent. Okay, I'll explain a little bit what, about what that means in just a second. Let's uh, get into the article here, here. It says, currently Massachusetts allows for paid surrogacy and traditional surrogacy Though in cases of traditional surrogacy, the intended parents must legally adopt the baby at birth, which would require a background check. At least one of the intended parents must have a genetic relationship to the child. H4672, the Parentage Equality Bill, would redefine parenthood, changing it from its basis in biology or adoption as a means of providing a home to a child who has lost his or her parents to the basis of a person's intent to be a parent of a child. Okay, let me explain this for just a second, because when we start talking about surrogacy or paid surrogacy, the requirement is really simple, and that is whoever is being or acting as the surrogate to the couple who is looking to have this child, there must be, within the couple that's adopting that baby, there must be a biological link, okay? So for example, if it's the mother who is incapable of of being able to carry the baby, then there has to be some element from the father, like their uh, like their sperm, right, to be able to bring uh, life to this ch to this child through surrogacy and to be able to adopt the child. Now this law is going to pretty much remove any of those requirements, and it's going to actually get worse than that. Let me read this article. It goes on to say, supporters of the bill argue that the current law has harmed same-sex couples and intended parents who use an egg or sperm donor because one of them is not legally the parent of the child conceived through a surrogate unless they have legally adopted the child. They complain that these couples have to adopt their own children to ensure their legal rights. Voila! That's what it comes down to, folks. It's all about believing in and continuing to support the gay and lesbian nonsense to believe the lie, right? This is about same-sex couples. That's what this is. They want to redefine family, and what this is going to do is it's going to destroy humanity as we know it. Look what it goes on to say. However, the adoption protects children from abuse due to regulations that are involved in the process. There is research on the negative outcomes for children who live with non-biologically related parental figures. One study found in studies across a wide range of cultures, the single best predictor of child abuse is the presence of a step-parent in the home. In fact, the risk of even unintentional deaths, such as drowning, is greater in step-families than intact or single-parent families. There's a lot to be said about this. I'm not going to get into a bunch of that right now. There is a lot to be said about this. Adoption, by the way, I'm just going to tell you when it's done right, is perhaps one of the most admirable, special, wonderful, 
Christ-centered, amazing things that can be done. And speaking from the perspective of a father who has three adopted children, I am so honored that I get to do what God did for me. He adopted me. I'm adopted. And if you're a Christian, you're adopted. And what we get to do is an incredible thing, but they are seeking to destroy all of that, okay? Understand that, folks. They are seeking to destroy all of that. Look what it goes on to say. Background checks exist in the adoption process to protect children from being placed in dangerous homes. With adoption, children are the clients and proper steps are taken to ensure children are placed with safe parents. With assisted reproductive technology, adults are the clients and no laws require background checks for adults creating children through ART and surrogacy. By the way, there's a lot of truth to this. Understand that in order to be able to adopt the children that me and my wife have had the honor to adopt, my very special, precious children, we went through so much it wasn't even funny. They look at every aspect of your life and run it right through the ringer. And I think that that's good. I don't think it's bad. I think it's a great thing that that happens because you want to make sure that any child that's being adopted is going to have an amazing life. It's really, really important, but it removes all of that. Look what the article goes on to say. It says, in a recent case, Adam Stafford King was arrested this year for allegedly planning to sexually abuse the baby boy. He and his partner, male by the way, were expecting via surrogate. Background checks that are not required in surrogacy could have stopped Mark Newton and Peter Trong from sexually abusing a boy they paid a Russian woman to carry in 2005. Police believe they wanted to have a child for the sole purpose of exploitation. The boy's abuse began just days after he was born, and video shows Newton abusing him less than two weeks after his birth. The men traveled the world for more than six years, selling the boy for sex with at least eight men, recording the abuse, and uploading the footage to the Boy Lovers Network. Forgive me for saying this, but animals like that, they shouldn't even be alive in society. I think that the justice system doesn't do enough to cage these animals and get rid of them. This is absolutely terrible. Animals don't even do that to their own. It's disgusting. Look what it goes on to say. According to the Federalist, most commercial surrogacy laws restrict surrogacy contracts to cases in which the surrogate is unrelated to the child she is carrying. However, the new Massachusetts bill would allow a biological mother to receive financial compensation in exchange for her biological baby, even allowing the surrogacy contract to be written after she has conceived a child. Under the bill, the House voted to repeal Section uh, 4B of Chapter 46 of Massachusetts law in regard to artificial insemination, which states any child born to a married woman as a result of artificial insemination with the consent of her husband shall be considered the legitimate child of the mother and such husband. This would no longer be considered true under H-47672. In addition, section 14 of the bill states an action to establish parentage of a child may be instituted during pregnancy but shall only be filed by the person to give birth of the representative by the IVD agency as set forth in chapter 119A on behalf of the person to give birth. In other words, a woman can naturally become pregnant by a partner or anyone else and then decide to call that pregnancy a surrogate pregnancy in which she can be financially compensated for the child by an intended parent. She would be allowed to quite literally sell her own biological child. The law would also allow surrogacy agreements in which the surrogate has sex with the intended father, allowing a man to pay a woman for for sex, then relinquish any conceived child to him as long as the court approves it. Prostitution meets child trafficking. Folks, I would highly recommend that you go back and you read a lot of what this article says because what it is saying here is absolutely terrible. Look what it goes on to say. It says the Federalist reported it says under H4672, the following would be perfectly legal. A woman undergoes the physical and mental health screenings required to become a surrogate, uh, becomes pregnant via sperm from a sperm bank, then posts to a surrogacy forum or social media group that she is not only available as a surrogate, but already pregnant. She could then choose to match with the couple. Guys, watch this. 
no background check legally required, willing to pay the highest payment of consideration, essentially auctioning off her child. As long as the surrogacy agreement meets the requirements outlined in the bill, it could be validated by a court and viewed as not only permissible, but legally binding. However, if that same woman became pregnant and decided to make an agreement with a couple to adopt her child while insisting that she be paid for placing her child with them, she would be prosecuted for baby selling. Do you understand how wicked this is, folks? This is, this is crazy. Let me read the next paragraph. People may see this as far-fetched, reported the Federalist, but it's already happened in California where unrelated adults can be listed on a child's birth certificate. In 2011, three women were convicted of operating an illegal baby selling ring that they uh, marketed as a sur surrogacy business. The three women included two attorneys who specialize in reproductive law and a woman who served as the surrogacy facilitator. Using their legal expertise, they were able to navigate around surrogacy laws that required surrogacy contracts to be in place before a pregnancy occurs. According to the FBI, they sent surrogates to Ukraine to be implanted with embryos from anonymous individuals. The surrogates believed there was a list of parents waiting for babies and that the company was legitimate. However, the three women usually waited until the second or third trimester before finding intended parents for the babies. Those parents were lied to and told that the babies were part of a legitimate surrogacy uh, arrangements of which the original intended parents backed out. If they paid 100 to 150,000, they could have the baby. Less than half of the money went to the surrogates and the scheme went on for years. Guys, what an absolutely ugly, ugly article. I mean, let me read reread the last sentence that I just read to you. If they paid... 100,000 to 150,000, they could have the baby. Less than half of the money went to the surrogates and the scheme went on for years. Folks, this is the type of thing that's going to happen. It's gonna be more child abuse. It's gonna be more child trafficking. It's gonna be more ugliness. And what do you expect? Folks, we already are living in a world that seeks to exploit children before they even get out of the womb. If they can kill a baby before the baby gets out of the womb, it's not going to be all that big of a deal to exploit them when they get out of the womb. This is crazy, but this is the world in which we live. Let me tell you what Jesus said about it. Let me read you the passage. It says this in verse 1 of Matthew chapter 18. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Now, it's kind of funny. What's probably happening here are the disciples are probably fighting about who's going to be the greatest, right? We know this from other gospel accounts. They are in a competition with one another. I, can, I get it, right? I understand. It's human nature. We get it. So they go to Jesus and say, Well, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? And Jesus gets a little child. And I love this. Look what it says in verse 3. This is what Jesus said. Verily, I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I love this because what this does is it gives me such a fantastic picture of what Jesus is talking about here. Because as a father of three very precious children, I can tell you this, my children blindly trust me. When I tell my children to do something, they will do what I tell them to do. If I give them a fact, they're not going to challenge that. They're going to believe what their Baba just told them. They look at the, at the words of their parents with a trusting and open heart. And generally, my children do not know what it looks like to, to live in an ugly world. My children are living in a world where they are schooled by their mother at home. They have a wonderful, beautiful life. They have everything they need. They, they live in a, in a beautiful home. They have lots of food whenever they want it. They live a life where they get to enjoy their family. They get to enjoy the company of a lot of good uh, uh, friends that come from righteous, wholesome families. My children live a beautiful life. And so they get to, in every arena around them, see nothing but good things. And so they trust everybody. The people around them, they, they look at them and they have an open, trusting, loving heart. They could walk up to anybody and give them a big hug. 
It's absolutely amazing. We had a a police officer knock on our door the other day because we had an angry neighbor uh, complain about us parking across the street. Yeah, no joke. I mean, that crazy, right? We actually, we went to the neighbor and talked to them and and, um, uh, did our our very best to just give them the love that they need to be shown. I think we did well. You know, I think they they, uh, understand us a little bit better, but they call the cops on us because we're parking across the street, you know? And I I have the the, the video of this. I wish I could show it to you, but I can't because I'm not going to show you pictures of my children but the deputy she knocks on the door because she wants to talk to us and say hey look there's nothing we can do i just wanted you to know i talked to her and this is what's going on so she opens up the door or she knocks on the door and my wife is standing there and as my wife is standing there my daughter is standing with her my oldest daughter so my wife uh, approaches the door and she opens up the door the deputy says hello my name is so-and-so from the sheriff's office And she looks down and notices that my daughter is right there and immediately stops her spiel and says, hi, honey, you prayed for me at the park the other day. And my daughter gives her a big old hug and she gives the deputy a hug. And so like, this is how my daughter is. She's such a a sweet spirited girl that loves people, embraces people, doesn't uh, make uh, any weird assumptions about them, just generally assumes that people are, 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 are good. And that's the heart of a child right? They're generally trusting. And Jesus says, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Look what he says in verse four, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you walk with the humility of a child that has nothing to lose. It's like, well, of course, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It doesn't matter. I've got questions to ask. I'm not the expert. If you just walk around like a child like this, man, you've got it made. But look what he says in verse five, and who shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones. Watch this folks. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, if it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. I didn't think this was that big of a deal of a verse until the very first time I went to Israel almost 30 years ago. And I walked into the city of Capernaum and I saw what a millstone was. I realized the millstone was this big, massive stone that probably weighed somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 700 pounds. So this is gangster talk right here. You tie this millstone around their neck and throw them in the depth of the sea. Look what it says in verse seven. Woe unto the world because of offensive. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Think about it. Apply that to the state of Massachusetts and what they're doing to these children. They're exploiting these children. Woe to them. It's so deeply dark and demonic and evil and satanic. And the state of Massachusetts now is actually allowing the exploitation of children to be legal? They're opening up that door? Oh, I would hate to be living in that state. Hey, I'm living in California. I'm already suffering the consequences of the wickedness of our satanically inspired governor. But folks, we're going down a very dark hill. We are going down a very, very, very dark road. We are going down a very, very dark path. And things are getting darker by the moment. Now, this is where the light shines. And this is the point of hope that we have to find, right? It's this. Seek the Lord with all of your heart. Follow his path. Choose his insight. Look to his word. Live the life that he calls you to be defend these precious children and watch the blessing of God pour upon you. Here's the good thing about a world that's getting darker, folks. As the world gets darker, the light that shines, which comes from us because Christ lives inside of us, it shines brighter. And when the light shines brighter, greater things happen. And this is the prime opportunity for us to watch God do greater things than he's ever done before. We get to watch God do miraculous works every day because we have the heart of a child with the mind and the bodies of adults who will defend the vulnerabilities that oftentimes exist within these precious little ones. And as we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who desperately need it, we get to see the light of God shine 
and we walk away understanding and knowing that God is good all the time. Now, if you're living in the state of Massachusetts right now, or you're living in the state of California for that matter, or you're living in any state that is encouraging the exploitation of children, I would beg you to go take a stand. In the name of Jesus, you gather people to start praying against these things. You go and you speak to your representatives. You make yourself known to explain to them that these things cannot be done because they're evil and they're dark. And God will be glorified and he'll supernaturally empower you to do something that seems to be insurmountable because that's what God is in the business of doing. God bless you guys. Keep fighting the good fight and keep seeking him.